Yeah, Michael, I was watching along with you back then, and, and, and you pretty much are on the edge of your seat during these missions, especially if it's the first time you've done something. And this is a rather complex thing. You're sending a spacecraft to the moon, landing. It's going to drill uh, two meters into the ground. It's going to grab uh, two kilos of rock. It's going to put it in another rocket and then launch it back to Earth, and it's got to come back and land. And everything has to go perfectly. So um, pretty much uh, this, is, this is a big moment for China. If they can pull this off, then that's one big step towards their final goal, which is eventually to send humans to the moon. And we've learned a lot about the moon since the rocks that were returned back in the 1970s. We didn't know at that time that there was actually water or ice on the moon. Some experts say that that could be a game changer. So talk to us about how things have changed since, I mean, 40 years is a long period of time. Well, it's interesting because they brought several hundred kilos of rocks back, and there's some rocks they have yet to analyze. And, of course, the interesting thing about this mission is it's landing in the uh, ocean of storms near a volcanic feature. And what it'll do is be drilling up uh, material that will allow us for the first time, really, to look at, you know, what volcanism on the moon is like, what the early moon was like, how long it was active, and uh, what happened to its magnetic field, and also perhaps what it is like today. And up until now, we really haven't had a chance to, you know, to drill in like that. So this will just add to the body of knowledge we've had, but we still, as much as we've been there uh, between the U.S. and the Soviet Union and China and India and Japan and almost Israel, we still don't know a lot about the moon, so there's much still left to learn. And each mission in China's program builds on the last one, so give us a sense of some of the key milestones we've seen so far with this program. Well, it started with just being able to go to the moon. That's a big deal. And then landing on the moon and then driving a rover on the moon and then doing a first, which is to go on the far side of the moon with a relay satellite. And so all those things together build, one, you know, they build upon one another. And eventually at some point you'll notice that uh, some of the drawings of China's uh, current rovers, the, the landing stage and some of their human landing ones, the human lander looks, looks like a bigger version of what's being launched now. So it's quite clear that you're just building a capability that will eventually lead you to the point where you could say, yeah, we're going to send people. So, Keith, talk to us about space exploration because, uh, you know, here in the United States, we had the Apollo missions and then, you know, it seemed like just things kind of fizzled. But there's a general excitement that happens in a country when you have something like this. Talk to us about what this does for China. Well, you remember back, back in the 60s, there was this song, Everyone's Gone to the Moon? And that, of course, everyone was either the U.S. or Russia. But you flash forward a bit, and now it used to be that you had to be a big country to even attempt to do this, and it was sort of a, an international badge of prestige to be able to do so. Now the capability to do this resides in many countries, and in some cases with individuals, with you know, like Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos. So now it's not so much a race between one country and another. It's a whole bunch of races, and some of them are just for the fun of it, some of them for science, some of them prestige. But there are more players now. So this has become something now that isn't just for one part of the world, but it's for everybody to be excited about. And the interesting thing with China and India and some countries that are now reaching out to the moon and to Mars and beyond, they're going through the phase that we went through back in the day. So maybe we're a little, you know, bored and say, yeah, we went to the moon 50 years ago. But China and India and Israel could say, yeah, but we're going today. And there's also talk of a space station. There's talk of a human colony on, Mar on the moon. Uh, talk to us about that. Well, again, you know, China has a space station. It's uh, sort of a larger version of something similar to what the U.S. and Russia had in the early days, but now they're going to be putting a much more uh, advanced version up there. And with that goes the capability of more you know, complicated operations with human spacecraft, which is another important thing. There'll be some docking involved, which is what you need when you're going to go to the moon. Uh, in, in terms of the overall strategy, um, you know, there are some people who think we should just send robots. Some people say we should just send people to low Earth orbit nowhere else. And then some people think that it's, you know, sort of human nature to not only visit worlds, but to maybe live there. And uh, 